Good morning, Frankie. Today's video is one that's going to be a lot more upbeat and positive than some of the others we've looked at because for class this week, we're going to be looking at some successes, some companies that managed to survive disruptive technologies. The first of these is Apple. Okay. First, a little history. Apple began as a company in 1977 selling computers. Okay. Uh, the power of software sold a lot of computers. VisiCalc was the first spreadsheet program on a computer. And if you interviewed buyers of the early Apple computers, they often said they bought them because they wanted to be able to run VisiCalc for their work. Apple has a reputation of having products that are not very open. They were proprietary and it was difficult to buy add-ons or features from other vendors. And then the first disruption hit. IBM came out with a PC in 1981. And that action by IBM essentially told people, particularly business managers and, and chief information officers, that it was okay for people to have a small computer on their desk. The IBM computer was open, it pub they published standards for it, and they, IBM encouraged others to write programs for their computer. The hardware was very modular and very open. Apple turned out not to be a factor in business because IBM had a long history of selling mainframe computers and many computers to companies. They were always considered the business computer company. And so the sales of the PC really took off, and Apple continued to be a niche product for schools, uh, graphic design, artists, things of that sort. In 1979, Steve Jobs and his crew visited the Palo Alto Research Center for Xerox. There they saw a graphical user interface, Windows, and a mouse. And, and this convinced Jobs that, that these technologies were the future of computing, and, and Apple went to work, and from this work came the Macintosh computer, a huge success for them. But even still, they could not dislodge IBM and all of the companies that built IBM-compatible computers. So Apple really was an also ran for many, many years. Its prices were higher than competitors. They were, computers were better at tasks that had heavy graphics. And finally, in 2006, Intel gave in and switched out its processor chip and moved to the Intel chip, the same chip that powered the PC. It became a modestly successful computer company, but a market share of less than 10%. And then someone woke up and said, hey, it's the consumer market out there that could be our forte. In 2001, Apple released the iPod. In 2003, the iTunes Store. They sold 100 million iPods in six years. And by 2008, users had downloaded 5 billion songs. Now remember at this time, and still today, there was rampant piracy of, uh, of music. Uh, people were listening to free music, they were sharing it, they were violating copyright laws iTunes gave you an opportunity to buy music legally for a relatively low price so that people who were troubled by taking music that did not belong to them now could purchase it for a price that was well within reason. 2007 the iPhone came out and 2010 the iPad. The results have been pretty spectacular. The products are incredibly successful Apple sold 237 million iDevices just in one year through September of 2012. And power in the music industry has been transferred to some extent from the recording studios to Apple because Apple is setting prices and setting the prices very low. And it's building on what the internet did to the music industry, which was to force it to unbundle. In the past, if you wanted a song, you had to buy an album for many, many recording artists. And so maybe there was one song or two songs that you liked on the album, but you paid $16, $17, $18 to buy a whole bunch of songs that you didn't want to hear just to get the ones you did. With the internet and, and the availability of music by the song, okay, then 
the record companies no longer had the power to force you to buy what you didn't want to listen to. And so Apple built on this trend in setting up iTunes to sell I'll buy the album and buy the song. And now we have tablets like the iPad that are challenging PCs. The PC market has suddenly gotten less attractive. People are replacing or buying iPads instead of a portable, a notebook, a laptop computer. And for a short time, Apple was the most valuable company in the market on market cap based on its successes. So let's stop for a moment and let you answer some questions about why you think Apple has turned out to be so successful. Well, what motivated the company? I think the disruptive technology of peer-to-peer -peer file sharing that came out with Napster and then extended through a number of, of uh, music services uh, gave the idea to Apple that, that you could succeed in this marketplace and that you could sell a product on a, a place like iTunes. There was the disruptive technology of the PC in 1981. Uh, this, I think, was a shock to Apple and it really started two divergent roads. It started the proprietary road that Apple went along, the more open road of IBM, and the higher prices that Apple charged. And that's why it never turned out to be a major computer company. Its performance was really so-so in that industry. So why is it a success now? My belief, superior design of products and user interface. The iPhone, the iPod, the iPad are elegant designs. And I think that there's a success item <laughs> that we have to say is there is the late Steve Jobs. Okay. Jobs had an instinct for the marketplace, so he was able to assess the market for consumers and clearly for design. So if you look at these devices and you look at Steve Jobs, these devices were friendly, they were easy to use, uh, they had a lot of functionality. I think also that one of the things Apple did that really took off was the App Store. So hundreds of thousands of developers created applications to run on these devices. So that not only was the hardware appealing, there were so many different things that you could do with it. So we have a combination of things. We have disruptions caused by the internet. We have uh, a, a lack of huge market success for the computer business that Apple was in. And then we have Jobs with his vision as to where the company should go and the kind of products that people wanted to buy and decisions like opening the App Store and encouraging other people to write software for it, much as IBM did with the PC in 1981. So Apple really did morph its business model. If you think back to our model of disruptive technologies, they took that top path coming out at the end. They morphed their business model, and now it is a wildly successful consumer products company.